Hello food fans, time for lunch, time for soup for lunch, and the soup is vegetarian vegetable. This is Campbell's vegetarian vegetables. This was sent to me from West Virginia by Kay and Brittany, and I thank you very much for sending it. This is uh, almost impossible to find uh, in the area where I shop at Kroger and at Aldi's. Neither one has any sort of uh, vegetarian vegetable, even house brands, but this is a soup I used to uh, eat a lot in 1956-57. Uh, I would pack my lunch uh, with either vegetarian vegetable soup or pepper pot soup, which uh, is also almost impossible to find now. And also I would sometimes use Franco-American spaghetti, which uh, I don't think uh, that is available anywhere right now either. And I will add some of my own ingredients. Part of a potato will go into the vegetarian vegetable soup and part of an onion that I have left, left over that was in the refrigerator and uh, I will add an entire carrot. So let's get started. I will let the uh, vegetables boil here. This is not the soup itself. This is about a soup can full of water with some onion and potato and one full carrot in there. I'll let that cook for a little bit and then we'll turn off the heat and add the can of vegetarian vegetable soup and we will have a lot of soup and maybe I'll uh, use some crackers in there. And it is boiling and I shall add a little bit of pasta, a tiny bit of pasta, in this case it's rigatoni and I've got just a little bit left in there. Stir that and let it uh, cook. And I'll turn out the heat here and take off the lid. And I've put in some pasta, some rigatoni, in the last uh, few minutes, perhaps the last 10 minutes of cooking. And just stir it and let it cool down a bit before I add the can of soup. And as it cools down, I'm going to add the soup, the Campbell's Vegetarian Vegetable Soup, which looks like it's filled with vegetables as it uh, arrives. And we'll let that all cook for a few minutes. And I will stir everything up here. I've got some oyster crackers. That I will be using when I get to the table and the oyster crackers um, somehow or other Aldi got oyster crackers at a time when that uh, usually was just a bare shelf let's, let's eat Ah yes, this looks good enough to eat, which is what I'm going to be doing with it. I'll mix the salad first uh, with my spoons. I uh, don't have the tomatoes again today. I have carrots, I have cabbage, I have mayonnaise, I have relish, and I have ketchup in my salad. And that is a very good tasting salad recipe, if I do say so myself. Still tastes good today. And I will trade spoons. Use a soup spoon for soup. And this, this looks pretty much like the vegetarian vegetable recipe of the 1950s with the exception of what I've put into it and I will add one more secret ingredient here and that is the oyster crackers which have come back onto the shelves and I do like the oyster crackers they're good with lots of different dishes, but especially with soup. It's very hot in Nashville today. This is what, Wednesday the 
6th, I guess, of July 2022. Just heard some thunder. Tomorrow we're supposed to have uh, severe weather in the Nashville area. Let me taste some of this uh, vegetarian vegetable soup. It is good, and it tastes pretty much like vegetarian vegetable soup of the 1950s. And I do believe plenty of vegetables will help you be more healthy, I think. I, I'm not a doctor, of course. I don't eat as much meat. As someone might think, maybe a couple times a week I'll have meat. I always have a salad or lunch. Let's talk about comfort zones. As you go through life, one of the things I've learned, I'm sure there's some people out there who are older than myself and would know more about what works and what doesn't work. But um, just in chance, I happen to be older than you. That was good then there is a possibility that I might have experienced some things that uh, you are wrestling with right now. One of the things that happens as we go through life, we get into a comfort zone where things are going well and we get uh, an opportunity to try something different. Should you step out of a comfort zone, <clears throat> step out of a comfort zone, or just uh, stay where you are and uh, trust that things will work out well and you won't have any problems? I left comfort zones many times. I'd say between five and ten times I've left what would uh, have been nice to try for something better. I, I left Louisville, Kentucky. I had a job. And I could have made out all right in Louisville, Kentucky. I might even have gotten some show business uh, experience there. But at age 17, I left the comfort zone behind and moved to Hollywood, to Los Angeles. Worked out well. Excuse me, worked out well. Took me a long time to get into into movies. <clears throat> a lot of vegetables here. And some of the vegetables are raw, like the I put in uh, the raw cabbage in the salad. Raw carrots. After four years in Los Angeles, in which I started up a record company, a publishing company, never got into a movie during the first four years I was in Southern California. Moved to New York City, nothing 
happened there that was beneficial to my career. But I went there and gave it a try. Then I moved to Las Vegas. I met someone who is working in radio. <clears throat> he let me do his show three nights when he had laryngitis. I've learned how radio worked. I got a job in radio pretty quickly and tried other stations. Eventually became a movie extra while I was in Las Vegas. Learned how to play piano. <clears throat> and I was doing all right and I decided I'm going to go back to California and try to make it there. In 1980 I moved back to Los Angeles, to Hollywood actually. And things happened very well for me. I recommend if you know what you're doing and you're not stupid, take a chance, take a chance, take a chance, take a chance, take a chance. Whatever you want, try for it. It might be waiting right around the corner for you. It's very humid today in Nashville. Each time I moved to a city where I knew no one. I did not know anyone in Los Angeles when I moved to Los Angeles. I did not know anyone in New York City when I moved there. I did not know anyone in Las Vegas when I moved to Las Vegas. But I knew how to say hello. I knew how to go after what I wanted. I wanted show business. Vegetarian vegetable beef is good and it's colorful, fun to look at. Cost-wise, I think um, a can of vegetarian vegetable soup, if you buy it at Kroger's online ordering spot, it's about $2 a can. And one can would be the basic beginning of a nice lunch. Add some pasta. Add some oyster crackers. This is a nice lunch. Sounds like a train getting ready to take off there. Root beer. As I say, it is a hot, humid day. And it's supposed to be hot and humid for the next few days. So I'm not working too hard. A 
Soup, I think, comes in an 11-ounce can. What I added to it probably made it a one-pound meal. All is going well for me. Thanks for all the new subs that I've been getting. I am thinking about getting involved with YouTube in a uh, fundraising campaign. Find out how it works, what uh, charities are available, and uh, I'll just look into it and see what uh, what one has to do to be helpful without being greedy. If you're starting up YouTube, make videos about something at which you would call yourself an expert. I make videos about food quite often. I'm an expert at food. I've eaten it before. Thunder again. At least two of my friends have lost their uh, sense of uh, smell and taste. One possibly from COVID and the other not from COVID. Hopefully they will regain their senses of smell and taste. Food for me tastes just about like it did the first time I tasted it. I've had a lot of very good food, not only my own cooking, my mom's cooking, my aunts and uncles cooking. I like the food in the army. I have a couple more spoonfuls here. Then I shall reveal the secret dessert. Not yet, but soon. This spoonful and one more. What was your favorite year? For me, all things considered, 1956 was my favorite year. Let me see if I can reach through here and get our dessert. The dessert for a Hot day is ice, ice cream, 
me put this where over here I guess mint chip ice cream it doesn't say chocolate I wonder if that means it's got uh, imitation chocolate chips did you hear about the uh, I don't know what it was robot something or other which when being programmed there's a train going by the robot said no didn't want to do that to discuss it further. Really happened. Where are we headed? Is the future going to be good? Will you make your little area of concern a better place? Or will you run away and leave it when it starts getting goofy? Hmm. Sure tastes like chocolate. I'll drink to that. Ooh, there's good. That train is about two miles away from here. But it's a very humid day. Train whistles travel further on humid days or nights. Thank you for watching.